Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. In this video, I'm showing two completed projects that are uh, were shown uh, previously in other videos as a work in progress. And uh, the two projects involve um, the shoreboard, which I had originally planned on doing two of them, but wasn't too sure about how it was going to come out. Uh, so I decided to just do one, see what that looks like before I move forward with investing more time and not liking either of them. So um, I finished one of the corners, and then we can take a look at that. And I've also completed two of the other two uh, bridges based on Her Starts Molt, and um, based on some uh, customer requests about some of the effects that were on the other bridges, I've done some changes to these, uh, so I'd like to show you that as well. So first with a general overview of the board, uh, one of the things I was looking for was to create a sandy shoreline, a water body that could double as both perhaps an ocean uh, edge as well as a large lake, and I uh, wanted an increased illusion of depth in the water. So what I did is I painted a, you know, I've sloped the, the surface uh, coming up to the shore, painted that with sand, uh, you know, placed a couple rocks, and then um, made successive pours of the resin, and I'll show you a side shot in a second, made successive pours, altering the tint slightly so that it would get more and more gradual as it comes up, so we'll be able to pick up this, this shoreline dropping off into the water more effectively. This required uh, numerous pores. This is a, a, a lot of resin. Um, I'm currently using clear coat. A lot of people ask me what I'm using for my resin. I used to use Envirotex. I found clear coat is um, a little bit lower cost and produces uh, about the same quality and results, so uh, that's with a K. Uh, anyway, um, what I've uh, done then to finish the board is I wanted something that looked a little bit different than some of the other pieces that I've done. Something to sort of set it off as um, having a slightly different environment. So I've interspersed all around the shoreline, uh, mainly grasses and sill floors, uh, weed tufts, and I'll show you a close-up of these as well. Um, these, um, you know, have little leaves glued to them, and it gives little pops of brightness as you look across that really sort of set it apart. Uh, and I wanted something that felt, you know, scrubby and low-lying and, you know, fighting for, you know, competing in a sandy environment, that sort of idea. I did not carry any of the vegetation down into the sand because I just felt like, eh, I don't know, you know, how many things can really deal with that. And if I, if I did, I'd probably want to change the type of vegetation. And I'm limited by the kinds that I have, and I don't want to start using things in the rivers that I use then on this, and it's going to make it look, I don't know especially because this is a different kind of uh, substrate here that I've painted. I haven't done anything quite like this before. Before anybody t says, why didn't you put breaking waves on it? Um, this is designed to receive model boats. Uh, the customer for this has several large, very um, ex excellently constructed model uh, ships, and uh, he wants to be able to place them on these. And so if you have large cresting waves, it's going to lift the bottom of the boat up, and it's not going to provide a very realistic appearance. So what I've done is done my typical undulating water surface using Mod Podge, Mod Podge and um, and that's going to allow for you know very versatile use of the boards without compromising their appearance very much. So here I just wanted to give you a close up of those vegetation. These are um, so floor tufts. Uh, these are the um, uh, tall buffalo grass, and they're short and long. Uh, I think it's the summer weed clumps. Um, they're fairly easy to put down, and uh, they have a wonderful shape. Um, but, of course, there's a lot of them on this board, so it took quite a while to individually place them all. Uh, but they, um, they have an interesting texture to them. You know, the leaves are a little bit, almost a little odd under macro, um, but they give a, such a nice effect at, you know, say a foot distance plus. Um, really like the way they've come out on here. I've thrown in a couple other little scraggly bits of vegetation, mostly to kind of break up the color and just give something a little bit different to the eye as you look across it, you know, to sort of um, not make it look entirely too uniform. And here you can see the edge of the board, um, you know, backed by the foam. And then what I did is I made a hardboard dam, um, sealed that, and then um, poured successive layers of Envirotex. So you can see this is a pretty deep pour. Um, I had to do it in, I think, four or five layers. And you can see some of those layers as I changed them going all the way up. Um, what I noticed, though, is that because the slope for the shore, you know, I've only got 
you know, this much of a transition height, which is not very much, that my first pores to produce an opaque transition at the bottom of the shoreline so that you couldn't see the painted line coming across really easily, I had to pour the first couple dark tints quite deeply before I could begin to lighten it. Um, so that's kind of interesting. I, I think, you know, if you wanted to have an easier time with that, you could slope this out much, much, much further. Um, but, you know, that's a, it, it's more challenging to carve it that way. And, uh, it, you know, it was something I hadn't really considered originally. But I think even with the, uh, the slope that I've produced here, um, it produces a really nice effect um, for the transitions. One thing, however, that I did notice, let me see if I can even find a spot. Um... Boy, they're really, they're almost impossible to see. I don't think you'll be able to see them actually. Is I did put in some vegetation under the water. A lot of people had been asking me about that after I did the lily pads. Um, you know, what about putting things in the water? Well, the challenge is, is that at this thickness, okay, if I have the, the vegetation, you know, sitting up an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch, um, I have, um, you know, I have to pour this really thick to cover it, and if I make the vegetation any taller, I'm going to um, run out of shore as I begin to fill this more and more, and of course it uses more and more material. And then what I found is that against the dark bottom of this, it produces such a dark environment, you can't see the vegetation once the resin is tinted to work with the shoreline here. So I was a little sad about that. It didn't really come out. It's not visible in there. Um, and I won't be including it in the future boards because of that fact, but it was um, I, something I had to learn and see. You know, one of the things that I had done before, let me show you, if you didn't see that, oh, they're a little dusty now, um, but in this instance, right, well, there is no dark painting beneath this. So everything shows up great in it. It's really easy to see, but that's because the, the very, very bright bottom or the absence of a bottom. And here you could see that because the bottom was painted, right, and it's a thicker pore, even here, it's very, very hard to see the vegetation in there. It's in there somewhere. Well, well I get a lot of reflection actually because of the angle I'm shooting this at. Let's see if I can fix that there. Well, anyway, you can look at the other video that showed that. Um, but um, to get, you know, and this is a little bit thicker even than, you know, that's thicker than the layer I poured. Um, but because I had to tint the bottom layer so darkly, it's really, really challenging to get vegetation to show up in it. So, I don't know, something to work on maybe in the future. Um, you know, people often give me some different ideas I hadn't considered, and that's something I'll think about, um, you know, maybe trying again in the future, but it's not something I think I want to pursue in the immediate. And here you can see the two completed bridges. Uh, the bridge that I had finished uh, previously in this style, in what I call the chipped stone style, uh, which was that small bridge, somebody called it sort of Venetian looking. Um, you know, I had modeled it pretty heavily and the customer really liked that, said that at a distance, you know, it really gave it some interesting appearance on the tabletop. So what I've done is gone in and done something similar on this bridge. And actually at first it felt a little bit too modeled, a little bit too camoed. So what I did is then went in with some weathering powders and sort of washed it over in successive layers, really took that down a little bit. Um, let's see if we can see that. I didn't go very heavy on the weathering powders as you know it, it didn't feel like something that would be dusty per se but something to sort of um, you know help some of the transitions pick out some of the recesses and just soften the overall uh, airbrush work that had been done on it to date. Uh, then I um, you know also went in and, and did a little extra you know darkening around the bottoms of the, the caps and you know added in some some patches on the, the stone as you know stone when it weathers the minerals are leached unevenly uh, and you get, you know, sort of off colors throughout. I also went a little lighter on the undershadowing of the arch. I didn't go quite as strong as the previous one as I felt like, you know, it, the customer had expressed some concerns about the uh, other bridge being too muted. So I wanted to leave it a little bit brighter than I had in the past. And for the Fieldstone bridge, um, well, first, the, the big observation is that I didn't put any moss on it. So I'm not going to shoot any photos of this until the customer has a chance to see it. If he wants me to put moss on it, I can do that. But I wanted each bridge to feel unique and a little bit different. And so I thought with this one, I'd omit the moss. And one of the things, as I said, he, he had um, you know concerns about was that the previous bridge looked a little too flat and gray, especially at a distance. He has very, very large displays. And while I'm used to viewing a bridge, say, at the 
arm length, you know, if we're playing on a four by six table, the farthest away it's going to be is say three or four feet. His display, the, the bridge could be say 10, 12, you know, more feet away. And so visually at that kind of a distance, you start to have to think about how to add in some color variations that are going to make it pop a little bit more at that kind of a viewing range. So what I did on this bridge, um, as I went in and instead of picking out the bricks, blocks individually, painting them, and then dry brushing the whole bridge to blend it together, I did the whole bridge first and then went in with GW washes, a um, couple colors, blended a few of them, and then went in and actually washed out some of the blocks to pick out some of the colors on them. And I think it produced a much more striking you know, look on the, the bricks. I mean, I, of course, I don't want them to look bright, bright. That's not my goal. But you can definitely see now when you're looking at this bridge at a difference that there are much more you know contrasting colors in it jumping out at the eye and I also went in and tried to you know do some shading and some different kinds of of greens along the bottom to uh, you know again add to some of that visual interest so I really like this look I think it, it to be honest I do think it's better than my previous bridge um, and I felt kind of reluctant to go over it with a lot of moss and hide up some of those details um, because you know I, I worked hard on them and I, I wanted them to show but um, that's something that could be done for you know not much more extra time to be honest and I didn't want to shoot photos of it until I, I get there okay so um, no photos of these will appear under the description until I get the okay that they're done and then I'll shoot the photos and put the link up. So that's, um, that's the Fieldstone Bridge.